Hey everyone, Lewis here for Pixel Surplus, and today we're going to learn how to master the Type on a Path tool in Adobe Illustrator. It's an amazing tool, and one that I find myself using all the time when I'm creating logos for clients. Today I'm going to teach you five techniques that I use regularly and I think give you the best outcome when it comes to this tool. There is also going to be a link in the description so you can download the follow along at home file. This means you can take as much time as you need listening to the video and using it as a reference whilst you work through these five different techniques. Links to this follow along at home file can be found in the description below, as well as a link to the Mile Heights Elegant Display Serif. This font comes in a demo version, as well as the full version, which gives you access to some of the most beautiful ligatures that I have ever seen in my life. Trust me when I say you're gonna wanna get your hands on this font. Once you've downloaded the Mile Heights font, as well as the follow along at home file, make sure to install the font so that we can access it when we're working in Adobe Illustrator. Once you've done this, open up the Adobe Illustrator file. You should be greeted with five logos on five separate artboards. Let's begin by taking a look around. First, we're gonna to head to our layers panel. If you don't have your layers panel open, head to window, layers. Inside the layers panel, we should see five logos listed one through five. These correlate to the artboards from left to right, as well as the background. This is just the background color of each of our artboards. Head to logo one, small circle, and hit the drop down menu. Now that we have access to these layers, we can see design here, text, hide, recreate, and logo group. We will be working with inside the design here layer for each logo. The text layer is just the text that we'll be using for each method. The recreate layer is just a visual of what we will be making for each method. As you can see, it's on the artboard in a light pink. You'll be able to match your design right on top of this pink layer. And finally, the logo group. This is just all of the other visuals on the artboard that don't correlate to the type on a path method. As you can see, we're going to be using the type on a path tool to add Architecture Studio in quite a small circle to the end of Benucci. So how do we do this? Well, first let's begin by going to our tool panel and choosing the ellipse tool or hit L on your keyboard. We're going to use the ellipse tool to draw a circle that matches the inner size of the architect studio. I find that changing from the fill color to the outline color makes it easier to see where I'm positioning the circle. Once we have our circle positioned correctly, we're going to go ahead and copy the architecture studio type from the text hide layer. Once we have our text copied, head to the type tool on the tool panel Hold the type tool and drag until you can select type on a path tool. With that tool selected, click on the circle that we just drew. Now highlight the default text and paste the text that we had just copied. As you can see, the scale of this text is too large. So what we're going to have to do is head to the characters panel and reduce the scale of our type. A point size of 15 looks to be about the same size as our pink text underneath. Now this is where I just want you to remember that the type on a path tool in Adobe Illustrator can be a little bit difficult to work with. It's an amazing tool, but it does just take a little bit of patience to get right. So you can probably see part of your text is missing. That's because of these long lines here and here that are used as left and right anchors for our text. By clicking and dragging these anchors, we can tell Adobe Illustrator where we want our text to start and end on our shape. So let's begin by dragging our left anchor to the nine o'clock position on our circle. And let's drag our right anchor to the six o'clock position on our circle. With our text center aligned, it should place our text in the most central position between our left and right anchor. It should also match the pink text that we had below. 
Great job. That's method one of type on a path complete. Let's head to our layers panel, head to logo one and lock it and unlock logo two. Click on the drop down menu so we can access all the layers inside logo two. This pill shape is very trendy right now. So best to know your way around it. So let's begin by clicking on the design here layer and opening the ellipse tool. You're going to first begin by drawing a circle that matches the same shape as the top and bottom half of our pill. I do this by taking my ellipse tool to the left hand side of the pill, click, drag and hold shift to scale proportionately until I reach the other side of the pill. Then use my selection tool to drag and match the top of the pill. Now that my circle matches the top of the pill, I'm going to hold shift and alt to scale from the middle. And you want to drag your circle so that it intersects the middle of the text. It should look something like this. This technique is key for keeping our text equidistant from the shape that we've created before. So now that we have our circle where we need it to be, let's copy the first piece of text, head to the tools panel and choose the type on a path tool, select our circle and paste our text. As you can see, our text is aligned to the baseline. So we're going to need to change this to the center of our text. You can do this by heading to type, type on a path, and type on a path options. This should bring up the options panel. Click preview, head to align to path and change this to center. Now that you've completed that, drag your anchor points out. You can tell if it's the right or the left anchor by the direction that the arrow is facing. The arrow points to where the type will be placed. Align the text to the middle by hitting shift control C and finally, increase the scale of the text so that it matches the example below. This doesn't need to be perfect, just remember we're learning the technique. Let's take that shape that we just created and copy and paste it. Now, we're going to grab our type on a path center point. It's this long line here that should be sitting in the middle of our text. You're going to take this and you're going to rotate it to the bottom of our circle. This can be a little bit finicky, but hopefully it should end up looking something like this with our text at the bottom of our circle, the right way up. Let's grab our text that needs to go onto the bottom of our pill shape by copying and pasting. Make sure to head back to our layer and paste in the new text. Once again, this has aligned it to the left. So hit Control Shift C to center align our text and move our circle so that it matches the shape. Scale our text up so that it matches closely to what was below. Head to the layers panel, turn off the hide layer. Sweet, you're already two methods down. Great work. Just make sure you head back to the layers panel and lock logo two and unlock logo three. The arch like the pill is very popular right now in logo design. So I'm gonna teach you how to master it. We're gonna draw a rectangle from the baseline of the A in Angelo to the baseline of the three in 1993 and with a height that reaches the baseline of the U in architecture. It should end up looking something like this. Then we're gonna take our direct select tool by hitting A on the keyboard and we're going to choose the top left and top right corners of the rectangle that we just drew. This should give you access to the round corners. So you're gonna grab these points and drag down to the middle until we have a nice arch in the top of our rectangle. Next, we're gonna grab our type, copy, and then we're gonna to head to the text tool and choose type on a path select our new shape that we just created and paste our text. Just like always, we're gonna move our anchor points. So take the left one down to the bottom left corner of our arch and the right anchor point 
to the bottom right corner of our arch. It looks like our text is left aligned, so once again, Control shift c to center align our text. Increase the scale of our type until it matches closely with the text below. Looks like a point size of 36.5 will do the trick. Finally, head to the layers panel and turn off the text layer as well as the hide layer so you can see the logo you just created. Great, three down, two to go. Let's begin by locking logo 3 and unlocking logo 4, as well as hitting the drop down menu so we can access all of the layers. This logo introduces subtle curves, and just like the circle, we're going to align our text to the center of a shape that we create. I like to use the center align when I have text that is on the top side and the bottom side of the shape. It allows the text to have the same value, as well as making it a lot easier to align to itself as well as the other elements in the logo. The shape that we're going to draw is like a stretched rugby ball. You're going to try and match it to the text above. This will take some time, so just play around and pause the video if you need to. And remember, it doesn't need to match the example below exactly. Once you're happy with the shape you've created, let's go ahead and copy the first piece of text. Head to the type on a path tool, select our new shape, and paste. Now we're going to need to align it to the center of our shape. So head to type, type on a path, type on a path options, and switch the baseline to center. Click OK. As always, grab our anchor points, drag the right one to the right and the left to the left. Now align the text to the center by hitting shift Control C. And finally, increase the scale to match something similar to the example below. A point size of about 35 should do the trick. Let's take that shape that we just created and copy and paste it. Head to our second line of text, copy and paste it in place of the old text. Our text looks to be a left aligned again, so let's center align it by hitting Shift. Control C and then grab our center point and drag it round our shape until it reaches the bottom and the text is the right way up. As I mentioned before, this can be a little bit frustrating, but if it doesn't work correctly, just hit undo and try it again until it matches. Once you have your text in the right spot, align it with the example text and increase the type to match. Once again, about 35 should do the trick. And there you go. There's only one more method to learn. And finally, logo five. Make sure to head to the layers panel and lock layer four and unlock layer five. This is a combination of everything we've learned. So you should be a master at this point. Let's begin by creating our circle. Once again, we're gonna wanna intersect the center of the example text. Like I said before, this really helps when aligning the top and bottom of our text. With the circle tool selected, head to the center of our artboard, hold shift, alt, and click and drag away from the middle until you intersect the example text. It should end up looking something like this. Once you have the circle where you'd like it, Copy the first piece of text, head to the type tool and select type on a path, choose the shape that we've just created and paste. You guessed it, we're gonna grab our left anchor point and drag it to the nine o'clock on our circle and grab the right anchor point and drag it to the three o'clock position on our circle. Our text looks to be left aligned, so hit shift control C to center align it and head to the type, type on a path, type on a path options, and change baseline to center to align it to the center of our shape. Finally, increase the size until it matches something similar to the example below. 60 should do the trick. Let's copy and paste the shape that we just created. 
head to our second piece of text, copy, and paste that onto our new shape. Align the text to the center by hitting shift control C and drag our center point around our circle until it reaches the bottom and is facing the right way up. Take our new shape and lay it on top to match the architecture studio example and increase the point size until that matches too. A point size of 55 should do the trick. Finally, head to the layers panel and turn off the text hide layer as well as the hide layer. And there you have it. Everything you could ever want to know about the type on a path tool in Adobe Illustrator. If you followed along at home and made it all the way through this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And whilst you're down there, why don't you check out the links for mile heights and pixel surplus. Speaking of pixel surplus, if you head over there, you can get your hands on free fonts, textures, mockups, graphics, and so much more, as well as gorgeous fonts like the one we use today, Mile Heights. Trust me, you're gonna wanna get your hands on those ligatures. Oh, and did I mention we have the best font bundles on the internet? I'm talking beautiful premium fonts at crazy discount prices. Don't believe me? Go take a look for yourself. Thanks again for watching our video and have a great day everyone.